Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr. Barton, where every week I try my very best to dig you out a beautiful Maths GCSE question that has been kindly provided for my Diagnostic Questions website by each of the exam bodies to help you prepare as well as you possibly can for your upcoming GCSE Maths exam. Now, this week's question, whenever I look on my Diagnostic Questions website, has been pretty poorly answered. And it's a topic, uh, a question, sorry, on ratio. And ratio has got increased importance in the new GCSE this year because, I'll tell you a little fascinating fact here, uh, in the old GCSE, the subtopics of maths used to be number, algebra, geometry in space, and data and statistics. And ratio was buried away in number. Well, he's only got an added promotion now. So now he's his own topic, ratio and proportion. So there's going to be more ratio and proportion questions than ever before. So you've got to get your head around them. And as I say, this question's pretty poorly answered. So we need to sort it out. Right, a recipe for biscuits uses butter to sugar in the ratio of five to three. How much sugar is needed with 360 grams of butter? Right, my advice, and it's, I know I sound like a broken record here, but do a drawing. It just makes life so much easier for this. Okay, so it uses butter to sugar in the ratio of five to three. So let me get this drawn. So I've got one, two, three, four, five parts of butter. And for every part of butter, I've got one, two, three parts of sugar. So there me sugar. Let me label me butter in B. So there's me kind of set up. How much sugar is needed with 360 grams of butter? So that tells me that my amount of butter I'm going to have there is 360 grams. And the question is saying, how much sugar do I need? Now, again, I know I'm biased because I've just drawn it, but I think when you set something out like that, it just makes it look a lot less daunting. See, I've got a picture in my head now of what it's going to be, okay? And when I get my answer, it's going to help me judge whether it's a sensible answer or not a sensible answer. So how am I going to work it out? So those five bits of butter or five parts of butter are going to equal 360 grams. So let's work out what each one of those parts is. So I've got 360 and I've got to divide it by five. Well, I'm never one to pass up an opportunity to do a bit of the old bus stop method. So how many times does five go into three? Well, it doesn't fit in a whole number of times, but I've got a remainder three. How many times does five go into now 36? Well, I think seven fives are 35. So I've got one left over. And how many times does five go into 10? Two times. So I reckon every single one of these bits is 72 grams. But here's the beauty of it. If you know those bits are 72 grams, you also know that the sugar bits are 72 grams as well. So now when the question says how much sugar in total, well, it's just 72 times three. Three lots are 72. Three twos are six. Three sevens are 21. Two one six grams. And if I had a little look over here across my fingers, I nice. B two one six grams. So I must have got it right. But you know what I'm going to say, right? Why stop there? We're having so much fun together. Let's have a little look at some of the reasons for the other answers. And let's go for a bit of orange. Where the flipping neck is 135 grams come from? Well, what you're gonna see common throughout each of these wrong answers is not reading the question and essentially going into autopilot. Because if you do this, 360, so this is for A, sorry, I should have said. If you do 360 and you divide your answer by eight, and then times by three, you get 135. Now, why have they done that? Well, I reckon they've said, ah, okay, 360, let's, let's, the whole thing's gonna be 360. So I've got eight parts, five and three. So let's divide it by eight, five plus three, and then times it by three, because I want the three parts for sugar. And likewise, if you get C, I reckon they've done 360 divided by eight, and this time times their answer by five. I've got 225, but they're not reading the question. They've not done the diagram. At no point should you be dividing 360 by eight because it refers to the butter. So they've misread the question. And likewise for D, D is another one. D, I reckon they've done 360, but this time they divided it by three and times their answer by five and ended up with 600. 
But again, it's not the right thing to do. It's reading the question too quickly and not doing a diagram. All of which brings me to my final thing. Now, often I say to you, how might they have got this other wrong answer? And I come up with another one, but instead I'm gonna set you a challenge. Can you rewrite the question so that 135 grams is actually the right answer? And then can you rewrite the question so 225's right? And then can you rewrite the question so 600's right? Because that'll really get you thinking about the essence of ratio and really put your understanding to the test. So my strong advice to you after you've done that is to try the rest of the quiz out on the Diagnostic Questions website on this because it will really test your knowledge of, of ratio and proportion and then hop on to mrbartonmaths.com and try out the videos worksheets all that kind of stuff until you're happy with it and then you'll be fine and i'll see you same place for a fresh question of the week next week take care bye for now